Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week we're going to talk about poetry and I think it's important for myself and other poets to talk about poetry. We're reading and we enjoy because it's not so much in popular culture as other genres of writing. Poetry in the modern age kind of needs a little bit of advocating or it's going to become kind of a dead art. And obviously people who write poetry don't want that to happen. And there are a lot of reasons for that. I mean, I think that they don't teach poetry very well from a young age. They make it really difficult and complicated and it's like turning English into math in a lot of classes. But poetry isn't all about sitting there and staring at a poem and trying to figure out the secret meaning and scanning for meter. You can really read poetry just to enjoy it. And it can be enjoyable, but I think a lot of people have trouble getting past their initial education with poetry, and it's hard as an adult now to sort of find your way into it. Particularly because with modern poetry, you know, what you can get in Barnes and Nobles is a pretty limited selection. A lot of modern poetry is more spread out than that. It's coming out of small presses. So if you're not part of the poetry community, if you're not an academic or you're a poet yourself, it's hard to find poets to read. And poetry shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be this weird in-group thing. And I hope that by showing some poetries on my channel, the few people that watch these videos might find a way to get into poetry in a way they haven't before. And part of it is that I do think some poets almost enjoy having that sort of limited elite kind of audience, so they're almost intentionally obscure. Which I don't like. I don't think it should be this in-group thing. And I know myself and a lot of modern writers write to be accessible. I would hate for my only audience to be other poets when I'm starting to write my own books. So I hope that my writing is going to be something that more people than people who are just like me can enjoy. So hopefully myself and other poetry readers sharing what they enjoy and what's fun and enjoyable and engaging for them to read will encourage others to spark that interest in poetry within themselves. And maybe that will help the modern reader sort of rethink what poetry is to them and find new ways to enjoy it. Because a lot of the fun of poetry is that you don't necessarily have to understand. Poetry is very rereadable. You can read a few poems a night, you know, you can chunk it up like that in a way that is a little harder with fiction. And I think there are a lot of people out there who would really enjoy poetry and maybe don't even know it yet. But anyways, after all of that introduction, uh, this week I'm going to be talking about Bucolics by Maurice Manning. Maurice Manning is a Kentucky poet. He has several collections floating out there. And this one in particular is an old favorite for me. I've read it through more than once and I've revisited it recently and I just feel like every time I come back to it I get a little more from it. So it's this metered rhythmic poetry that's kind of whimsical and it's all sort of about the natural world and this godlike creator the speaker refers to as boss. So the entire collection is in conversation with boss in this very sort of casual friendly way which I think is an interesting and really beautiful way to think about the relationship between people on earth and this creator. When I think of bucolics it's kind of like the poetic version of a Bob Ross video. It's really beautiful and soothing and has these wonderfully profound moments that are expressed in this nice simple way that everyone can enjoy. So something that you can kind of unwind to and makes you feel good but also makes you think a little bit I think is what you get from this poetry. 
I mean, that's what I'm amazed by every time I come back to this collection is that it's just so fun to read. It's so light. It's such a nice break to come back to after reading really, really heavy literature. Because a lot of books and poetry are about really dark, serious things, especially when you're talking about the world of literary fiction and poetry. So it's nice every now and then to read something that is a little sweeter, a little lighter. And not that this doesn't have depth, I think it has a lot of depth. It's asking questions of God directly. So as a collection, this doesn't devalue how complicated and interesting emotions like happiness and wonder can be, which as a writer myself, I've always felt was really important. You know, just because you're writing about sad things doesn't make you deep necessarily, and just because you're writing about happy things doesn't make you shallow. I think a good writer and a writer I want to read knows how to be honest in the full range of human emotions and understands that all of those things are complicated and interesting and should be written about. And it's all about having this um, great appreciation for the natural world, which sort of gives this um, underlying weight to the whole collection that, you know, we should all be amazed every day by this world we live in. You know, it's easy to just sort of forget how crazy it is. But this is a book that remembers. So some other things about this collection. It is mostly metered. The meter allows for this natural rhythm that flows through the whole collection, which I think makes a lot of sense with the subject matter of nature. There's also no punctuation and very little capitalization, which I think for readers who are maybe more used to reading um, prose, it can throw you a little bit at first. But really, I think it's just a matter of just going with the meter, following the flow, reading the whole thing in one piece as a poem is meant to be read and not worrying so much about where one sentence ends and the next begins. It all sort of flows together. And I think after you read the first few poems, you sort of stop to notice that because you get kind of sucked into the rhythm of the poetry. There are also no titles. The poems are just numbered, which I think all of those factors are sort of contributing to this collection being a whole connected experience. I mean, this is a collection that flows and pulls you forward and has so much beautiful language. You almost don't experience each poem individually. You get this greater overall sense with all the poems. So there are a couple poems I wanted to read in this video just to give a sample of the writing. This one is poem number 12, so it's pretty early in the collection. Why, boss, why do the days drift by like a leaf asleep on a bed of water? Does the leaf forgive the tree that let it fall into the water? Does it know how stiff the river's face can be, how smileless rivers like to be? At least this one, boss, not a flinch or a bristle bloomed on its glassy face. The moment the leaf lay down, no joy, no breathy gasp from the river's lips. When all the leaf was trying to do is cuddle, boss, does cuddling move the likes of you? Are you the river or the thing that makes the river's face so still? If a thing so little as a leaf decided to cuddle up to me, I couldn't stand it, boss. I couldn't stare it down like you. I'd have to say you hush now, leaf. You hush your little mouth, good night. So I think that poem sort of gives you a sense of the tone of the collection. It's gentle and beautiful and very introspective and musing on all of these natural scenes. It's creating these metaphors to ask these theological questions and to understand the world around him while also acknowledging that, you know, as people, we can only understand so much. Okay, this next one I want to read, I think is number 49, but it's in Roman numerals, so I'm a little unsure once the numbers get past like 20. 
But anyways, this is one of my favorites in the collection and one of the ones that stuck with me the most after my first reading. O oh, boss of ashes, boss of dust, you bother with what floats above the chimney, what settles to the ground. You wake the motes from sleep, you make them curtsy in a ray of sun. They hold their tiny breath as if they're waiting for the little name of the dance that's coming next. Then they will take their places, boss. If I were smaller, I would join them. Oh, I'd cut a rug or two. I'd slap my hand against my shoe if that's the kind of fuss you're raising, boss. You know, I never know for sure. I only know you bother me. From time to time, you've caught my breath. A time or two, you've stirred me up. Before which makes me want to tell you, boss, I wouldn't mind if you bothered me a little more. So it's this really beautiful metaphor about feeling stirred by God, feeling this godly presence in your life, um, drawing the comparison with dust motes. I just think the language is so beautiful. I just want to kind of fall into this poetry. And then there's these little moments of whimsy in the language, like saying, I'd cut a rug or two. There's this kind of uh, light humor in it. So there's some examples of some of the poetry you would find in this collection. I mean, I find Maurice Manning's poetry to be so beautiful and interesting and something I keep wanting to return to. I mean, as a poet, he's very unpretentious and there's this beautiful simplicity in his language that allows for these very interesting, deep, profound moments. So I would totally recommend this book and I have many times to poets and non-poets alike. I think anyone can find some beauty in this book. And so if you are interested in poetry, but everything feels kind of disconnected with small presses and everything, and you don't know exactly where to start, give Maurice Manning a go. And maybe subscribe to my channel because I will definitely be making videos about poetry in the future. You might be able to get some recommendations. Okay, well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching.